Welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and today we're going to be touching the subject of keyframes in Blender. So keyframes are a fundamental part of animation in any 3D software and essentially if I were to put it in a simple way, um, if we were to move any object or rotate it or scale it, add any kind of um, value to a transform vector over this timeline, um, so for example at frame 30 I want it to be in this location, be this scale with these transform vectors, we can insert a keyframe, so it's gonna hold all of those values or those numbers on that specific keyframe. And then we can come to another frame, we can move along our timeline, and we can change those vectors however we want, and we can insert another keyframe. And then Blender will automatically, through a, what we call interpolation, add in that data for us, so we don't have to do it like the old days where you had to go frame by frame, like stop motion animation and take a picture each time. So the computer does a lot of the work for us. And keyframes can not only be used for our location, our rotation and scale transforms, they can also be used for anything like, for example, the strength of a light. We can make a light be a certain strength at a certain time and later on in our timeline, we can increase the strength and Blender will automatically do that for us. We can change colors over time. We can um, change how a modifier behaves over time. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this tutorial, just the real fundamentals of keyframes for beginners, and I hope it's something you can use to grow as a 3D artist. So um, let's get started. So I've opened up a fresh new scene in Blender 2.93, and you can see here it just comes with the basic default cube, the camera, and the lamp. We're just gonna be selecting uh, the cube here, the mesh objects. Now, anything really that's in our viewport, we can pretty much animate and add keyframes to, but let's just use the default cube here. It's really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit one to go into my front orthographic view. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can even just go into your, your front view. It doesn't even have to be your orthographic. Just, you know, front view so it should be fine. And you're gonna see down here, we have our timeline, right? So we starts at one here, and by default, it runs to 250 on the end here. And it's actually running at 24 frames a second. So if you hit the space bar and you play the animation, uh, you can see it's actually running you know, 24 frames for every second that passes. Now, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna select this default cube, make sure it is actually active. Um, it's very important that it is selected. You can confirm that by coming up to your scene collection here and seeing that the cube is active. And let's start by coming to frame one. Obviously, that's the beginning of our animation. Now, whenever we wanna add in a keyframe, a really easy way to do that is to hit I. So with any object you have selected in your world space here, you're gonna hit I, the I key on your keyboard, and it's gonna give you all of these insert keyframe options, right? So the most common one is location. So location is pretty much when we move anything. So if you hit N to bring up your properties panels, hit the N key, come up here to the item, and you're gonna see all of these transform vectors. So if we hit I, you can see we have the location, which is this one here. If you hit I as well, you can see rotation, and you can also see the scale here. These are our three main um, transform vectors for anything in the 3D space here. So along the X, Y, and the Z coordinate, we have these values here and we're using these ones, we can do any kind of animation really. So let's start now that you kind of have that out of the way with a basic animation. So let's want, let's make this cube just move. So let's come to frame one and we're gonna hit I and we wanna move it. So that's gonna be what? A location, so we're gonna hit location. And on frame one, it's now keyed that location. So you can see here it's confirmed because we can see that the location here is actually now yellow. So if we actually move the little slider, you can see it's no longer yellow, it's green. The green lets us know that on this location vectors along the timeline somewhere, there is a keyframe. That's why these two here are not green. But if it's specifically on the keyframe here at frame one, you can see it is yellow. That being said, you can also hover over these transform vectors and also hit I and it'll insert a keyframe. So let's move about 25 frames in. So this is a 24 frames a second. That's the, the, the frame rate in Blender by default. So let's come to about 25. So in 25, it's gonna be roughly a second that has passed. So let's make this move. So we're gonna hit G. G allows us to move things in our space. And then we're gonna hit X. The X is gonna constrain it to the X axis here. So we're gonna move it over to the side a bit. And you can actually see here now that we have a negative 6.6046 meters over here in the negative. You can also come and drag the slider to do the exact same thing. Okay, so you can hit G, X, 
or you can just come in here and manually do it. You can see we have the green here, which is the Y axis. So if you wanted to move it on the Y, you can do it in the negative or the positive positive value and up and down is going to be our Z axis which you can do as well. So you can use these here to move the cube however you want or you can just hit G and you can do the exact same thing positive negative and any of the spaces. So just using those free transform vectors on the location you can move an object anywhere in Blender. So while we're on frame 24 here I'm just going to move it here anywhere really and then hovering over here I'm going to hit I for those location vectors and it's going to insert a keyframe. Once again, you can just hit I in your, your world space here and also insert a location keyframe. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we have that movement. So between frame one and frame 25, Blender is automatically gonna fill in that data via interpolation. So an interpolation is just this method it uses to automatically calculate and fill in all of these spaces in between. So it's not gonna be like all time stop motion animation where we have to come to every single frame and move it a little by little by little by little. Right? Um, so if we were to actually select these keyframes and they're active and we hit T, we can actually see Blender comes with interpolation methods, which we're not gonna be going into because this is not what that's about. This is just teaching the keyframes. That could be a video for later, um, a subject for a later video. So we can essentially go along a timeline with any kind of spacing and we can move the cube around. So I'm in frame 60 now, so which is another two seconds in and then I'm gonna hit I and I'm gonna insert a location. Once again, you can manually move up here if you want. And just doing that, you can pretty much move a cube, a camera, anything in the 3D space here around. Now, what are these rotation and scale ones? Now they're pretty much just as the name suggests. Not only can you move things, by hitting G or coming here to the location sliders. You can also rotate by hitting R. You can rotate, you can also tap R twice and that'll rotate around the origin point. Or you can come here to the rotations and for example, if I wanted to rotate it on the X, I can come here to the X and rotate it only on the X axis, as you can see. If I wanted to rotate it only on the Y, I can rotate it on the Y. Or I can double tap R and rotate them all over the place and you can see the rotation vectors here are going crazy. So let's say we come over here to frame one and let's just you know give it a random rotation. So it's about this much on the X, this much on the Y, you know, just make it whatever you want. Hovering over here, you can hit I to insert a rotation vector. You can see it's now yellow on frame one, or you can also in your, key, your viewport space here, just hit I and this time insert a rotation, not a location. So you can insert a rotation, then come to something like frame 40 maybe and then mess around with this, you know, rotate it a little bit differently and then hit I and insert a rotation or you can come here and just hit I over here. And you can go all along here and just rotate it however you want, hit I and insert a rotation. And we're going through the 3D timeline, the timeline here, and as time is going on, we can do all of these different moves, hit I, insert the rotation, and we can now see when we play animation all of this here is happening and that's pretty cool. Now the scale is just as the name supplies. So the scale is gonna be the exact same thing. We can hit S, we can hit S to scale, hover over here, we can hit I, hovering over these guys here and it'll insert a keyframe, move along the time line anywhere and then hit S to change the scale, then hit I and insert a scale. Once again, you can hover over the scale here or hit I here. Those are the two different ways you can do it. And now we also have that scale. But what if you want to do all of them at the same time? So what if I want to come here to 80 and then move it, rotate it and scale it. So I've got all of these guys changed here now. What we can do is we can hit I and we can come here and insert a location, a rotation and a scale all at the same time. And using these methods here, you can really make anything transform, rotate, move through the free space in any way you want and it's just super simple. Very, very easy, anybody can do it. If you wanted to make the markers look different, you can come here to the king, and you can come here to the new keyframe type, and you can change it to these different keyframes for different things. It really just show, is for organization purposes. So you can see here, if I now hit I and I insert a, for example, location keyframe somewhere, I've changed it to that blue keyframe now, and you can see it's different. I can also come here to the king and change it to any one of these ones. 
Um, and that's for if you're doing like animation, you might want to do different kind of things like breakdown poses, keyframes, moving holds, extremes, jitters. Um, I won't get into that, but that's just um, one of those cool things about Blender that you can also add different colored markers. Um, another thing with keyframes, um, if you come to some of the, like for example, let's go over here to the materials tab, right? And a lot of the things here you can see have these little dots next, next to them. So you can not only add keyframes to these 3D ve transform vectors here, you can take some of these things, for example, in the materials, for example. So for example, I took, went down to the viewport display and I changed the color here. So I gave this a material to kind of a red. And then maybe on frame 40, I can click on this little dot here and it'll insert a keyframe. Then I can come to frame 100 and I can change that to a blue color and then click on this little keyframe button here. And now between 40 and 100, it's gonna automatically morph that color or interpolate it for me between red and blue. So keyframes can be used for all sorts of things. Wherever you're gonna see these little yellow, these little buttons, you can click them to change the value of things over time via the keyframes. You're gonna see these um, little keyframe dots just in about anything. Anywhere we have a slider or a color value or something, you're usually gonna get these little buttons so you can add keyframes for things like that as well. So Blender is really cool like that, where it gives you a lot of control over these sort of things. Um, even the world color, the strength of a light, for example, you might want a light to start really weak and then get stronger. There's all sorts of things you could do like that. For example, if we select this lamp over here, or the light, and we go to our light settings. So for example, maybe at frame 40, we want the light to have 1000 watts of power. So we click on the little keyframe here. And let's say by the time it gets to about 120 frames in, a few more seconds, we wanna change this to like 6000 watts. And then we click on the keyframe, and now between 40 and 120, that light will get more intense. And if I actually go into my rendered view here, you can see between 40 and 120, that light is gonna become more intense. So that is the basic fundamentals of keyframes in Blender. And I've done it really simple at a beginner's level so you can kind of understand it and it's not too complicated. And um, yeah, that is it. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.